concurrency control again in this there are three parts in unit number 3 concurrency control in that there are three parts first one is your process thread synchronization and mutual exclusion process thread synchronization and mutual exclusion second part is your classical synchronization problem and third part is your deadlock so it is divided into three part unit number third concurrency control in the concurrency control what we have to study process and thread synchronization and mutual exclusion so what is mutual exclusion means only one process should be allowed to execute in a critical section that is nothing but the mutual exclusion this what happens suppose any process want to execute it requires some resource so it will go into the critical section so what is critical section a section where all the resource has been or all resource has to be allocated to that process for the execution that is called as a critical section now when the process enter the critical section second process should not enter the critical section that is called as a mutual exclusion that we have to okay for that purpose there must be proper communication between the process and thread two simultaneous process should not enter the critical section in simple language you can say your third l class okay t class in group number second so what is that t class it is a critical section in which different resources are there bench is there blackboard is there okay fan is there light is there this other resource which has to be allocated by the process so that that is called as a critical section in operating system that class is called as a critical section and what is mutual exclusion when i have i have entered the class okay so what is i myself is a process p1 i have entered the class so second process should not enter means second staff should not enter into the class getting it means when you the process is executing in a critical section second process should not enter the critical section this is called as a mutual exclusion means what whenever i am in the class second teacher or second staff should not enter the class so this is what only one process is currently executing in a class or in a critical section okay that is called as a mutual exclusion so this is this is a process synchronization and mutual exclusion so what is synchronization there must be proper communication between the process means x y z and a post doc sir come on sir and myself there must be proper communication there must be proper synchronization okay so that is what synchronization required between the process and then only the mutual exclusion will occur so in this one what is there what are the points we have to cover principles of concurrency means what is concurrency more than two process should execute in multi process system or the uni process system so what are the principles for concurrency why we have to go for the concurrency then second point is your requirement of mutual exclusion so what are the requirement of mutual exclusion means that mutual exclusion will occur and third point is a mutual exclusion in that there are three types now first one is a hardware support means we are using different hardware support method hardware support means your interrupt disabling is there then some types of instructions are there that is a hardware support then operating system support this is developed by the os so os will support this mutual exclusion so in that os we have two types os support system in that semaphore and mutex two types of so we have to study what is semaphore and what is mutex so operating system support semaphore and mutex and third type is your programming language support in that we have to go for the monitor okay so mutual exclusion how to handle the mutual exclusion there are three types hardware support operating system support and third one is a based on your programming language support so we'll go for hardware support in again there are two types then operating system support again there are two types similar for the mutex and programming language support it is a monitor okay so this is a first part of unit number third second part is your classical synchronization problem means there must be proper synchronization between the process there are some problems in a means the example problems means what these are the example for classical synchronization means there must be proper synchronization between the processes
so in that first one is your reader writer problem second one is the producer consumer problem and uh, third one is your third party is your inter process communication means how the communication between two processes carried out in the operating system with the help of pipes shared memory and system file so there is a practical for this one system file implement the inter process communication using the system file so we study that also so what is reader writer problem means suppose there are three readers and two writers so there must be what when a writer writes the data what is function of reader and writer reader is to read the data and writer is to write the data so what is when a reader is two or more readers can read the data simultaneously because there is no change in that data the code suppose i am writing something on the blackboard so how many readers are there we are 16 or 59 students are reading that so what happens there is no any change in the data only more than one reader can read data simultaneously or concurrent but writer does not happen this when your writer is writing that data or two writers cannot write the data simultaneously or so that is your reader writer problem means more than one reader can read the data simultaneously but writer cannot write more than one writer cannot write so there must be proper synchronization between reader and writer means when your writer is writing the data reader cannot read that data because it will read the incorrect data so there must be proper synchronization or communication between reader and writer so we have to do this reader writer problem and second one is your producer consumer problem so what is the function of producer he will produce some items what is function of consumer he will consume some that item which are items are produced by the producer now what will happen in this suppose you are having the buffer okay so in that buffer producer will be producing the atom and consumer will consume that atom now if the producer is continuously producing and there is no communication between producer and consumer at that time your buffer will be full okay and if the consumer is consuming and producer is not producer at that time buffer will be empty so that should not happen so there must be which atoms are produced by the producer which will be consumed by the consumer so there must be proper synchronization between producer and consumer so that is the producer consumer problem that we have to study so we are in practical for this also producer consumer then third part is of inter process communication so how the communication between these process will be happen or carried out there are different methods pipe is there message is there shared memory is there we study that also different types of methods for communication okay then third part is your deadlock so what is the deadlock in deadlock no process execute third part is your deadlock so what is the principles of deadlock what is deadlock in deadlock no process will execute suppose uh, general example suppose from four direction four cars are coming at the center and each one want to pass to another one each one is blocking the second car so no car is moving from left to right or your north to south and east to west so what is this this is a call as a deadlock so no process is executing because resource is held by some another process so that is called as a deadlock so principles of deadlock there are four principles of deadlock first one is a mutual exclusion second one is hold and wait third one is no preemption and last one is a circular wait so these are the principles of deadlock when you this four condition will occur deadlock will occur then deadlock modeling how to model a deadlock using graph strategy deal with deadlock so in this there are Auschwitz algorithm is there. Then deadlock prevention, deadlock avoidance, deadlock detection and recovery. So in the deadlock avoidance, this one, we have to study the Banker's algorithm. 
banker algorithm so compulsory for 8th mass the problem comes regarding to the banker's algorithm or deadlock avoidance in that banker's algorithm we have to say banking example is there this what happens suppose you are having 5000 in your account and if you remove that 5000 so balance should be 100 okay it should not be minus whatever may be so this is how we have solved this problem using the banker's algorithm that is the deadlock avoidance and last part is your a integrated dialogue strategy in that we have to go for the dining philosopher problem so this is dining philosopher means what five philosophers are sitting around the table there are two spoons so each one is having one one spoon so five spoons are available and two spoons are required for eating the rice so how there must be communication means out of five only two philosophers can eat remaining three can go on thinking state so likewise we are having practical for this also tiny philosopher okay so this unit unit number third is because more than four practicals are from the unit number five, five practicals are there in unit number three so this is a out of 12, 11 practicals five to six practicals are from this unit number third that is your concurrency control Okay, shall we start now? Unit number third. So in that first point that we have to go, multiple processes, what is need of concurrency? So what is concurrency? What are the different methods for concurrency? So what is why we have to go for the concurrency? So in that multiple processes, because more than two processes can exist, that is requirement for multiple. So operating system design is concerned with the management of processes and trade for the purpose of multi-programming, multi-processing and distributed processing. So in this, what happens now? More than in multiprogramming, more than two processes or two programs are executing. In multiprocessing, again, multiple processes are executing and distributed processing. Suppose you are having distributed system. So simultaneously or concurrently or parallelly, we can execute more than one process on a distributed system. For that purpose, we have to go for the how to maintain this or how to carry out this processing, continuous processes, we have to go for the concurrency. So concurrency arises in the three different contexts. Multiple approach, second one is a structure application, and third one is a operating system structure. So in multiple application, invented to allow processing time to be shared amongst active application. This what happens here? We are allocating the time for each and every process so they can share that time basis and execute simultaneously. So multiple application can be care invented to allow multi uh, allow processing time to be shared among active applications means sharing of time is done and second one is your structure application extension of modular design and structure programming so based on your based on your application structure application we are providing the with the help of programming structure programming and modular design simultaneous or concurrent execution can be carried out and third one is the supported by the operating system OS themselves implement a set of processes or set that can run concurrently or simultaneously okay so based on these three principles or three contexts you have to go for the concurrent now these are some basic definition which is required in the whole unit unit number third some definition first one is a
atomic operation of function or the action implemented as a sequence of one or more instruction that appears to be indivisible that is no other process can see an intermediate state or interrupt the operation the sequence of instruction is guaranteed to execute as a group and not execute at all having no visible effect on a system state atomicity guaranteed isolation from concurrent processes now what happens in this atomic operation means only a single operation should be carried out in on that process second process should not know what type of operation is carried out on that process so this is what atomic operation a single operation carried on a process second process should not know which or types of operation are carried out on that process so that is called as a atomic operation second one is a critical section now i already explain what is mean by critical section a section of code within the process that require access to the shared resources this point that require the access of the shared resources and that must not be executed while another process is in a corresponding section of the code i got this what do you mean by critical section your class third year class so this is a critical section so which are the shared resources all the resource bench bank so these are the then students so this is all your uh, this is nothing but your critical section in which the resource has been shared now in programming or in operating system we can say as a, a section of code within a process okay that requires access to the shared resources means that resource has been shared by multiple processes but only currently one process is holding that resource whenever that resource is free by that process then only the second process can allocate that resource in a critical section so that is called as a critical section third one is your deadlock a uh, deadlock is in which two or more process are unable to proceed because each is waiting for one of the other to do something it was do something either it stop the current execution or it release the resource which is hold by that process now in this deadlock state no process is executed okay both are in a same state no one is uh, no one is ready to release the resource so everyone is in a steady state so that is called as a deadlock no process is executing because what happens in this now suppose p1 is holding r1 r1 resource and p2 is holding r2 but p1 requires r2 and p2 requires r1 but both the process are not ready to release that resource so this is what deadlock no process is now executing so that state is called as a deadlock then live lock a situation in which two or more process continuously change their state in response to change in the other process without doing any useful work so that is called as a live lock so in this what happens the process are continuously changing the state means changing the one another state which is not required because it is working in some operation process without doing any useful work they are changing the state that is called as a live lock then mutual exclusion so i explain what is mean by mutual exclusion the requirement that when one process is in a critical section that access is the shared resource no other process may be in a critical section that access any of those shared resources in simple language whenever any process is in a critical section second process cannot enter the critical section for accessing the shared resource so that is called as a mutual exclusion then race condition what is race condition you know what is in race one next one is the condition so what is race condition a uh, which a multiple thread or processes read and write a shared data item and the final result depends on the relative time being of their execution means each and every process is fighting in simple language to access the shared resource 
so that is called race condition last one is a starvation in which a unable process is overlooked in definite time by scheduler although it is able to proceed but it is never chosen so that process is a starvation process means what is function of scheduler to select the process from the ready queue for execution on the processor so there are some process which are ready for execution but scheduler does not select that process scheduler does not select that process so that process is called as a it will go in a starvation state okay that is called as a starvation so this is a next point principles of concurrency 